Chapter 3. Tuning into New Potentials in the Quantum Getting beyond our body, our environment and time isn't easy. But it's worth it because once we disconnect from three-dimensional reality, we enter a whole other reality called the quantum, the realm of infinite possibility. Describing this reality is a bit challenging because it's unlike anything we are familiar with in the physical universe. The rules of Newtonian physics, the way we are used to thinking the world works, simply don't apply. The quantum, or unified field, is an invisible field of energy and information, or you could say a field of intelligence or consciousness, that exists beyond space and time. Nothing physical or material exists there. It's beyond anything you can perceive with your senses. This unified field of energy and information is what governs all the laws of nature. Scientists have been working to quantify this process so we can more fully understand it, and they are discovering more and more all the time. Based on my knowledge and experience, I believe there's a self-organizing intelligence that is energy, and it is observing all of the universes and galaxies into order. Sometimes people will say to me that this idea seems a bit unscientific. I always answer them with the same question. What happens after an explosion? Order or disorder? Their answer is always that disorder results. Then I ask, so why, after the Big Bang, which was the biggest explosion ever, has so much order been created? Some intelligence must be organizing its energy and matter into form and unifying all the forces of nature to create such a masterpiece. That intelligence, that energy, is the quantum or unified field. To give you some idea of what this field is like, imagine taking away all the people and bodies on Earth, all the animals and plants and physical objects, both natural and man-made, all the continents, the oceans, and even the Earth itself. Imagine you could then take away all the planets and moons and stars in our solar system, including our sun. And then imagine taking away all the other solar systems in our galaxy, and then all the galaxies in the universe. There's no air, and there isn't even any light that you can see with your eyes. There's just absolute blackness, the void, the zero-point field. It's important to remember this because when you as a consciousness in the present moment unfold into the unified field, you will be in an infinite black space void of anything physical. Now imagine that not only do you not see anything here, but because you enter into this realm without a physical body, you also have no sight with which to see, nor do you have the capacity to hear, feel, smell, or taste. You have no senses here at all. The only way you can exist in this quantum is as an awareness. Or better said, the only way you can experience this realm is with your awareness, not your senses. And since consciousness is awareness, and awareness is paying attention and noticing, once you are beyond the world of the senses, when you pay attention to the energy of the quantum field, your consciousness is connecting to greater levels of frequency and information. Yet as strange as this may sound, the quantum field is not empty. It's an infinite field filled with frequency or energy. And all frequency carries information. So think of the quantum field as being filled with infinite amounts of energy vibrating beyond the physical world of matter and beyond our senses invisible waves of energy available for us to use in creation. What exactly can we create with all this energy swimming in an infinite sea of potentials? That's up to us because, in short, the quantum field is the state in which all possibilities exist. And as I just said, when we find ourselves in the quantum universe, we exist simply as an awareness or as a consciousness, specifically an awareness that is paying attention to or observing a field of infinite possibilities existing within an even greater consciousness and a greater level of energy. As you enter this endless, vast space as an awareness, there are no bodies, no people, no objects, no places and no time. Instead, infinite unknown possibilities exist as energy. So if you find yourself thinking about knowns in your life, you are back in the three-dimensional reality of space and time. But if you can stay in the blackness of the unknown for long enough, it will prepare you to create unknowns in your life. In the previous chapter, when I was instructing you to return to the present moment, I was referring to you stopping yourself from thinking about the predictable future or from remembering the familiar past and simply unfolding into this eternal, vast space as an awareness to no longer place your attention on anything or any one material in this three-dimensional reality like your body, the people in your life, the things you own, the places you go, and time itself. If you do that properly, you are nothing but awareness. That's how you get there. Now let's back up a bit and look at how scientists came to discover the quantum universe, 
which happened when they began studying the subatomic world. They found that atoms, the building blocks of everything in the physical universe, are made up of a nucleus surrounded by a large field containing one or more electrons. This field is so large in comparison with the tiny electrons that appear to be 99.9999999999999% empty space. But as you just read, the space isn't actually empty. It's made up of a vast array of energetic frequencies that make up an invisible, interconnected field of information. So everything in our known universe, although it may appear to be solid, is actually 99.9999999999% energy or information. In fact, most of the universe is made up of this empty space. Matter is an infinitesimally small component in relation to the immense space of nothing physical. Researchers soon discovered that the electrons that move around in that fast field behave in a completely unpredictable manner. They don't appear to be subject to the same laws that govern matter in our larger universe. They're here in one moment, and then gone the next, and it's impossible to predict where and when the electrons will appear. That's because, as the researchers eventually discovered, the electrons exist simultaneously in an infinite number of possibilities or probabilities. It is only when an observer focuses his or her attention and looks for something material that the invisible field of energy and information collapses into a particle we know as the electron. That is called collapsing the wave function, or a quantum event. But as soon as the observer looks away, no longer observing the electron and taking his or her mind off the subatomic matter, it disappears back into energy. In other words, that particle of physical matter, the electron, can't exist until we observe it, give it our attention. And the moment we're no longer putting our attention on it, it turns back into energy, specifically an energetic frequency which scientists call a wave, and into possibility. In this way, mind and matter are related in the quantum. By the way, just as we as subjective consciousness are observing the electron into form, there's an objective universal consciousness that is constantly observing all of us and our three-dimensional reality into order and form as well. So what that means for you is this. If you're viewing your life from the same level of mind every single day, anticipating a future based on your past, you are collapsing infinite fields of energy into the same patterns of information called your life. For example, if you wake up and you think, where's my pain? Your familiar pain soon appears because you expected it to be there. Imagine what would happen instead if you were able to take your attention off the physical world and the environment. As you learned in the last chapter, when you take your attention off your body, you become nobody, and you no longer have access to, or any use for, the senses. When you take your attention off the people in your life, you become no one, and so you no longer have an identity as a parent, a partner, a sibling, a friend, or even as a member of a profession, a religious group, a political party, or a nationality. You have no race, no gender, no sexual orientation, and no age. When you take your attention off objects and places in the physical environment, you are in no thing, and nowhere. Finally, if you take your attention off linear time, which has a past and a future, you are in no time. You are in the present moment in which all possibilities in the quantum field exist. Because you are no longer identifying with or connected to the physical world, you are no longer trying to affect matter with matter. You are beyond matter and beyond how you identify yourself as a body in space and time. In a very real sense, you are in the immense blackness of the unified field where nothing material exists. That's the direct effect of continuously laboring to get to the present moment that I described in the previous chapter. The moment that happens, you unfold your attention and energy into an unknown field beyond matter where all possibilities exist, a field made up of nothing but invisible frequencies carrying information or consciousness. And just like the quantum scientists who took their attention off the electron only to find that it reverted to energy and possibility, if you were to take your attention off your life, or get beyond the memory of your life, your life should turn into possibility. After all, if you focus on the known, you get the known. If you focus on the unknown, you create a possibility. The longer you can linger in that field of infinite possibilities as an awareness, aware that you are aware in this endless black space, without putting your attention on your body, on things, or on people, places, and time, the longer you invest your energy into the unknown, the more you are going to create a new experience or new possibilities in your life. It's the law. Brain Changes When you walk through the door to the quantum field, you can't enter as a somebody. 
You have to enter as a nobody, as only an awareness or a consciousness, a thought or a possibility, leaving behind everything else in the physical world and living only in the present moment. And as I said in the previous chapter, this process requires that you break your chemical addiction, at least temporarily, to the same emotions that used to drive your thoughts, and you stop feeling the same way so you can stop putting your attention on the three-dimensional world of matter, the particle, and instead put your attention on energy or possibility, the wave. Given all of that, you probably won't be surprised to learn that such an experience creates some pretty significant changes in your brain. First, because you are perceiving yourself as being beyond the physical world, which means there's no outside danger to anticipate, your thinking brain, the neocortex, the seat of your conscious mind, slows down, becomes less aroused, and works in a more holistic fashion. Earlier, we talked about how living by the hormones of stress causes our brain waves to fire in a very disordered, incoherent pattern, which in turn means our bodies can't work efficiently, because we are trying to control and predict everything in our lives. We become excessively focused, shifting our attention from one person to another thing, to some place at a certain time, activating the various neurological networks assigned to each one of these knowns. Once we slip into the present moment and become aware of this infinite field of information where there is nothing physical, this eternal void, and once we are no longer analyzing or thinking about any body, any one, any thing, any place, or any time, we are no longer activating those different compartments of neural networks in our brain. And as we move our awareness from a narrow focus on matter, objects, people, places, our bodies, and time, in our external environment, and instead open our focus and become aware of the vastness of this infinite blackness by putting our attention on nothing, on space, and energy and information, our brain begins to change. The different compartments that were once subdivided now start to unify and move toward a coherent whole brain state. Different neural communities reach out and form bigger communities. They synchronize, organize, and integrate. And what sinks in the brain begins to link in the brain. Once your brain gets coherent, you get coherent. When it gets orderly, you get orderly. When it works well, you work well. In short, when it functions more holistically, you feel more whole. In other words, once you start connecting to the unified field as an awareness, or once you become more aware of it by paying attention to it, your biology becomes more whole and unified, since the unified field is by definition a unifying energy. To more clearly see the difference between coherence and incoherence, Take a look at graphic 2 in the color insert, as well as figure 3.1. As you can see, when brain waves are coherent, they are in phase with one another. Both their crests, their high points, and their troughs, their low points, match. Because coherent brain waves are more orderly, they are also more powerful. You could say they speak the same language, follow the same rhythm, dance to the same beat, and share the same frequency, so they find it easier to communicate. They're literally on the same wavelength. When brain waves are incoherent, on the other hand, the electrochemical messages or signals they are sending to different parts of the brain and body are mixed and erratic, so the body cannot then operate in a balanced optimal state. The second change our brains experience when we enter the quantum is that our brain waves move into a slower frequency, from beta brain waves to coherent alpha and theta brain waves. That's important because as we slow down our brain waves, our consciousness moves out of the thinking neocortex and into the midbrain, the limbic brain. And there, it connects with the autonomic nervous system, the body's subconscious operating system. See figure 3.2. This is the part of the nervous system that is in charge of digesting food, secreting hormones, regulating body temperature, controlling blood sugar, keeping our heart beating, making antibodies that fight infections, repairing damaged cells, and myriad other functions of our bodies over which most scientists believe we have no conscious control. Basically, the autonomic nervous system keeps you alive. Its main job is to create order and homeostasis, which balances the brain and ultimately the body. The more we can linger in the present moment as no body, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time, the more integrated and coherent our brain becomes. This is when the autonomic nervous system steps in and begins to heal the body, because our consciousness merges with its consciousness. In other words, when you are in the present moment, you get out of your own way. As you become pure consciousness, pure awareness, and change your brainwaves from beta to alpha and even to theta, the autonomic nervous system, which knows how to heal your body much better than your conscious mind does, steps in and finally has an opportunity to clean house. That's what creates brain coherence. If you look at graphics 3A-3C in the color insert, you'll see three different brain scans. Graphic 3A 
is a normal scan of someone in normal thinking beta brainwaves. Graphic 3B was recorded while a student was performing an open focus, showing coherent, synchronized alpha brainwaves. Graphic 3C represents a deeper brainwave state of coherent, synchronized theta. If in this state you are no longer reaffirming the known, your same life, and instead you keep investing your energy into the unknown, as you would invest money in a bank account, then you are able to create new, unknown possibilities in your life. Just as the material electron expands back to immaterial energy in the quantum field once scientists stop observing it, when you no longer observe your pain, your routine life and your problems, they will turn back into energy, into an infinite number of possibilities, into pure potential. Only once you are truly present in this potent place beyond this space and time, the place from where all things materially come, can you begin to create real change. At a four-day advanced workshop in 2016 in Tacoma, Washington, we conducted a study to show how this actually works. We measured the brain waves of 117 workshop participants using electroencephalograms. EEG measurements were taken before and after the workshop. We were looking to see if we could detect changes in two different measures of brain function. The first measure was how long it took the subjects to achieve a meditative state, defined by the ability to maintain an alpha brainwave state for at least 15 seconds. We found that the participants were able to achieve meditative states 18% quicker by the end of the four-day workshop. The second measure we looked at was the ratio between delta brainwaves, associated with moving into deeper levels of the subconscious mind, and high-range beta brainwaves, usually associated with high levels of stress. Anxious people usually have lots of high-range beta and a lower level of delta brainwave frequencies. We were looking to see if meditation, specifically the successful practice of slipping into the quantum realm and becoming no body, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time, might improve those values. And in fact, it did. Participants lowered their high-range beta brainwaves, indicating they were feeling less stress, by an average of 124%, and increased their delta brainwaves, indicating a greater feeling of oneness during meditation, by an average of 149%. The amount of high-range beta brainwaves diminished relative to the amount of delta waves by 62%, and this all happened in only four days. Look at figure 3.3 .3 to see these results. You'll notice that some of the changes we measured were greater than 100%, indicating these participants were able to make unusually significant improvements relatively quickly. That's pretty supernatural. Changing your energy. Combining a clear intention with elevated emotions. Once you're in the sweet spot of the generous present moment, where all possibilities exist in the quantum field, how do you turn one or more of those potentials, those immaterial possibilities, into reality in the three-dimensional world of matter? This requires two things, a clear intention and elevated emotion. Your clear intention is exactly what it sounds like. You have to get clear on what it is you want to create getting as specific as possible, and describe it in detail. Let's say you want to go on a great vacation. Where is it you want to go? How do you want to get there? Who do you want to go with? Or who do you want to meet when you're there? What sort of accommodations do you want to stay in? What do you want to do or see when you're there? What food do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? What kind of wardrobe will you pack? What will you buy to bring home? You get the point. Make it detailed. Make it as real as you can because you are going to assign a letter as a symbol of possibility to all of those conditions. As you read in the previous chapter, those thoughts, which make up your intention, are the electrical charge you are sending out into the unified field. Now you have to combine that intention with an elevated emotion such as love, gratitude, inspiration, joy, excitement, awe, or wonder, to name just a few examples. You have to tap into the feeling you anticipate you will have when you manifest your intent, and then feel the emotion ahead of the experience. The elevated emotion, which carries a higher energy, is the magnetic charge you are sending out into the field. And as you have read, when you combine the electric charge, your intention, with the magnetic charge, elevated emotion, you create an electromagnetic signature that is equal to your state of being. Another way to describe these elevated emotions is to call them heartfelt emotions. Usually when we feel emotions like those I just mentioned, we notice that our heart begins to swell. That's because our energy is moving to that area, and as a result, we feel these wonderful, elevated feelings that carry an intent to give, to care for, to nurture, to trust, to create, to connect, to feel safe, to serve, and to be thankful. 
Unlike the stress emotions, which we discussed in the previous chapter, that draw from the invisible field of energy and information that surrounds the body, these heartfelt emotions contribute to the body's energy field. In fact, the energy that is created when the heart opens makes the heart become more orderly and coherent, just like the brain, so it produces a measurable magnetic field. It's this action that connects us to the unified field, and when we marry an intention, the electric charge, with that energy, the magnetic charge, we create a new electromagnetic field. Since energy is frequency, and all frequency carries information, it is that elevated energy that carries your thought or intention. Remember, those potentials in the quantum field exist only as electromagnetic frequencies, frequencies with information, and you cannot perceive them with your senses as matter yet. It makes sense, then, that the new electromagnetic signal you broadcast would attract those electromagnetic frequencies in the field that are a vibrational match to it. In other words, when there's a vibrational match between your energy and any potential that already exists in the unified field, you begin to draw that new experience to you. It will find you as you become the vortex to your future. So in that way, you don't have to work to bring what you want to manifest to you, and you don't have to go anywhere to get it. That's changing matter with matter. You have to become pure consciousness. No body, no one, no thing, nowhere in no time. And change your energy, the electromagnetic signal you are broadcasting. And then you will draw that future experience right to you, changing energy into matter. You will literally tune into the energy of a new future. And as you do so, the observer, the unified field, is observing you observe a new destiny. And it then endorses your creation. Take a glance at figure 3.4. Before we go any further, I want to back up just a bit to emphasize how important elevated motions are for this equation to work. After all, when you decide to observe a future in the quantum field that you want to manifest, if you're doing it as a victim or as someone who's suffering or feeling limited or unhappy, your energy is not going to be consistent with your intended creation, and you won't be able to call that new future to yourself. That's the past. You may have a clear intention, and therefore your mind may be in the future because you can imagine what you want. But if you feel any of those familiar limited emotions, your body still believes it's in the same limited past experiences. As you learned in the previous chapter, emotion is energy in motion, and elevated emotions carry a higher frequency than survival emotions. So if you want to create change, you have to do it from a level of energy that's greater than guilt, greater than pain, greater than fear, greater than anger, greater than shame, and greater than unworthiness. In fact, any lower vibrational energy that you are feeling cannot carry the thought of your future dream. It will carry only a level of consciousness equal to those limited emotions. Therefore, if you're going to perform something that's unlimited, you'd better feel unlimited. If you want to create freedom, you better feel free. And if you want to truly heal yourself, you'd better raise your energy to wholeness. The more elevated the emotion you feel, the greater the energy you broadcast and the more influence you will have on the material world of matter. And the greater your energy, the shorter the amount of time it takes for your manifestation to appear in your life. In this process, you relax and allow a greater mind, the consciousness of the unified field, to organize an event that's right for you. You essentially get out of the way. When you are surprised by an unknown experience that seems like it came out of nowhere, that's because you created it in nowhere. Something appeared out of nothing because you created it in no thing. And it can happen in no time if you create it in the realm beyond linear time. That's the quantum field where there is no time. A French researcher named René Pierc, PhD, demonstrated the power of intention with newly hatched baby chicks. When chicks hatch, they usually imprint on their mother, bonding with her and following her around. But if the mother isn't there when the chicks hatch, they'll imprint on the first moving object they encounter. For example, if a chick first sees a human, it will follow the human around in the same way. For his study, Pierc built a special type of random event generator, a computerized robot that would turn randomly as it moved around an arena, going right 50% of the time and going left 50% of the time. As a control, he first recorded the robot's path in the arena with no chicks present. He found that over time the robot covered most of the arena equally. Next, Pierc exposed newly hatched chicks to the robot. As expected, they imprinted on the robot as if it were their mother and followed it all over the arena. After the chicks had imprinted on the robot, he removed them from the arena and then put them in a cage on one side where they could see the robot but not move toward it. What happened next was astonishing. 
The intention of the baby chicks to be near to what they believed to be their mother, in this case the robot, actually influenced the random movements of the robot. It no longer moved all over the arena, but instead remained in the half of the arena closest to the chicks. See figure 3.5. If the intentions of baby chicks can influence the movements of a computerized robot, just imagine what you can do in drawing your future to you. In this place of the unified field, you're actually becoming aware of what already exists, and you're bringing it to life with your attention and your intention. Here, you can be a genius. You can be abundant. You can be healthy. You can be wealthy. You can have a mystical experience. You can create a new job. You can resolve a problem in your life. Remember, all these possibilities exist as electromagnetic potentials in the quantum field. You cannot experience them with your senses because they don't yet exist in this space and time. They exist only as a frequency or energy carrying information that has to be tuned into and observed into this space and time. And in order for you to do this properly, you are going to have to connect to that information and energy with your energy and intention. Here's another way to look at it. If you're unified with the consciousness and the energy of every body, every one, every thing, every place, and every time within a vast unified field of potentials, then observing a potential in the quantum is just like becoming aware of your hand in the physical world. You're already connected to it. It already exists. Tuning into the energy of your future and intentionally observing that potential in the quantum then causes infinite fields of energy to collapse into particles called a quantum event, and that becomes an experience that can then manifest in your physical three-dimensional world. Then when you get up from your meditation, even though you are back in the three-dimensional world of matter, because you already experienced the elevated motion you anticipated ahead of the experience, you have no choice but to get up feeling as if your intent has already manifested, or as if your prayer is already answered. You feel intimately connected to your new future, knowing it will show up in a way you can't predict, because if you can predict it, then it's a known. In effect, you get up as a new self, one who feels more like energy than matter. But you must remain aware, because the moment you forget and start stressing about when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, you'll return back to your old self, trying to predict the future based on the past. And then you'll start feeling the same old familiar emotions, with the same lower energy, that influence your same old thoughts, and you've just made the choice to stay trapped in the known. We could say that you'll disconnect from the energy of your future the moment you feel the familiar energy of the emotions of your past. If you instead become successful at tuning into this potential you have chosen over and over again, and you get familiar with it, you will be able to tune into it not only in meditation, but also when you're in line at the bank. You'll be able to tune into it when you're sitting in traffic. You can do it when you're shaving, when you're cooking, and when you're taking a walk. You can do it over and over again with your eyes open, just as you do when your eyes are closed in meditation. Just remember, every time you tune into the energy of your future in the present moment, you are drawing your future to you. And if you do it often enough, and you do it correctly, you'll change your biology from a past-present reality to a future-present reality. That is, you will change your brain neurologically from being a record of the past to becoming a map to the future. At the same time, as you teach your body emotionally what that future will feel like in the present moment, you'll recondition your body with this new elevated emotion. You'll be able to signal new genes in new ways, and you'll change your body to look like the future you chose with your clear intention has already happened. That means you begin to biologically wear your future. Jace Goes Quantum When my oldest son Jace finished graduate school, he went to work for a large company in Santa Barbara that made sophisticated cameras for the military. When he completed his contract, he moved to San Diego to work with a startup. After a while, though, he became disillusioned with the management and decided to leave the company and travel. He's a big wave surfer, so he came up with an elaborate plan to go all over Indonesia, Australia and New Zealand for seven months. He packed up his suitcase with the surfboards and off he went and he had the time of his life. After six months, he called me from New Zealand and said, Dad, listen, I have to start thinking about what I'm going to do when I get back to the real world. I want to create a new and better job than my previous ones, but I want to do it differently. I've learned a lot from taking time off. Okay, I responded. There must be a potential in the quantum field that you can tune into that's related to a new job for you. Take out a piece of paper and write the letter J on it and draw two squiggly lines around it to represent the electromagnetic field. Hang on, because you're going to be doing something similar in the meditation at the end of this chapter. Once he had done that, I said, That J is a symbol that represents a possibility, your clear intention of the job you want. 
But now we have to get very clear on exactly what kind of job you want. So let's list what's important to you in this job. I want you to think about the conditions of what that letter J for new job means to you. Under that J, I want you to write the word intention and list the specifics of what you want in your new job. You can write down anything you want except when or how it's going to happen. I want to be able to work from anywhere in the world, he told me, and I want to make the same amount of money I was making at my old job, or more. I want to have independent contracts for six months to a year, and I have to love what I do. Good. Anything else? I asked. Yeah. I want to be my own boss and lead my own team, he said. Okay. Now you have your clear intention, I told him. Every time you think of this letter J, can you associate the letter with the meaning you just gave it? All of the specifics of what you want that you just listed. He said he could do that. Then I asked him to think about how he was going to feel when it happened. Next to or below your sub-intentions that you listed to get clear on your new job, I told him, I want you to write elevated emotions, the energy of my future. Now, let's list them one by one. What are they? Empowered, in love with life, free and grateful, he told me, identifying the elevated emotions he would use to bring this job to him. All that was left was just making everything line up. Take a look at figure 3.6 to see what Chase did. You have plenty of time on your hands right now. You're not doing much but surfing and relaxing on vacation, I told him. So it should be easy for you to create your future. Will you commit to doing what it takes to broadcast a new signature into the field every day? He agreed. Then I reviewed with him the concept of finding the present moment and getting centered and raising his energy so that his energy could carry his intention for his future. Just hold that symbol in your mind's eye while you radiate that energy into the space beyond your body in space, I instructed. Like tuning in to a radio station and picking up a frequency that carries information. The longer your awareness lingers in this energy, or the longer you are conscious of the energy of your future, the more likely you will be to call the experience to you. So just tune in to the energy of your future every day. And remember, whatever you broadcast into the unified field is your experiment with destiny. When there is a vibrational match between your energy and the energy of this potential, it will find you. So Chase, can you stay there? Yeah, he replied. And then once you've been in that new state of being for some time, I want you to think about what you're going to do in your new job, I continued. What choices will you make? What things will you do? What experiences await you and how will they feel? I want you to live in that future reality in the present moment. Simply remember your future from that new state of being. Just as people tend to obsess about the worst thing that could happen to them in their lives every day, I was instead asking my son to obsess about some of the greatest things that could happen when his new job found him. Think about all the time you will have to surf, the traveling you can continue to do, the team of people you will work with, their strengths and the money you can save for a new house and a new car, I encouraged him. Have fun with those ideas each day. Just like the piano players and the muscle exercises that you read about in the last chapter, Jace was about to prime his brain and his body to look as if the future he wanted had already occurred. And since where you place your attention is where you place your energy, I continued, I want you to invest your attention and your energy into that new future. And just as your body follows your mind to the shower every morning, to a known, if you keep doing this process, your body is going to follow your mind to an unknown. Jace agreed to do the meditation every day. One month later, he returned, and the moment he landed in Los Angeles, he texted me and asked, Hey, Dad, I'm in the U.S. again. Can we talk? Uh-oh. I thought, here we go. So I called him and asked how things were going. Great, Chase said, but I kind of ran out of money. I don't know what I'm going to do. Now, the father in me wanted to say, don't worry, son, I'll spot you some money until you get back on your feet. But the teacher in me prevailed and responded. That's so cool because now you're really going to have to create. Now you're in the unknown. Let me know how it goes. And I hung up. I could feel his discomfort, but I know my son, and I knew he would get focused and do the work. Since he was really feeling the heat now, Jace had to seriously step up his game. He drove to Santa Barbara to see his college roommates, and a bunch of them went snowboarding for four days, just as they do together every year. When the four-day weekend was over, he stopped back in Santa Barbara before coming home, and he happened to walk into a surf shop. All of a sudden, he saw the top 
surfboard fin designer in the world, who also just happened to be there. They started talking, and before long, the designer told Jace, I'm looking for an engineer to design surfboard fins. We're going to revolutionize the industry together. I need him for six months to a year, and he can run his own show, do whatever he wants. All I care about is ending up with a high-quality product. You know how the story ends. Jace got the job, with a one-year contract that he can renew at any time. He makes more money now than he did in his other job. He loves his new career because of his passion for surfing. Sometimes he texts me and he says, I can't believe they pay me to show up and do this. He's his own boss, he can work from wherever he wants to, and he gets to go surfing to try out all the fins. He's in love with life. He didn't have to send a resume, he didn't have to make a phone call or write an email, and he didn't have to go anywhere to interview or fill out an application. The experience found him. When we become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time, we are taking our attention off all the distractions in our outer world that keep us from being present with the unified field of intelligence that is within us and all around us. We are turning inward and being present with a consciousness that is always present with us. The moment we line up with that omnipresent consciousness, as if we were looking directly in a mirror, it looks back at us, and it can finally reflect what we show it that we want. The longer we linger in this place of nothing material and invest our attention and energy into it, the closer we move to the unified field. And when we are at the altar of infinite potentials, when we change our energy, we change our lives. As we move toward it and trust in the unknown, without returning our awareness to the material world of the senses in three-dimensional reality, we experience more oneness and wholeness within. That process begins to fulfill our lack, our separation, our duality, our disease and our fractured personalities. Our biology becomes more whole as we become more whole. After all, when we are whole, there simply is no lack. Nothing can be missing. At that point, we are simply observing what already exists in the quantum field of all possibilities or potentials and bringing it to life with our attention and our energy. So now I have to ask you, what experience is out there in the quantum field waiting to find you? Preparing to tune in. This meditation requires a little advanced preparation. First, I want you to think about a potential experience you want to have. Remember that just like the electron before it collapses into matter, the experience already exists as an energy or a frequency in the quantum field. This is the energy that you're about to tune into. Some of our students have lowered their cholesterol levels just by tuning into a potential. They lowered their cancer markers. They've made tumors disappear. They've also created great new jobs all expense paid vacations, new healthy relationships, more money, profoundly mystical experiences, and even winning lottery tickets. Believe me, my team and I have seen it all. So go ahead, step into the unknown. Once you have the new experience you want to create, assign a capital letter to it, and then write that letter down on a piece of paper. Think of the letter as a symbol that represents that specific possibility in your life. Actually, putting it on paper instead of only thinking about it is important because the act of writing it down solidifies that you want it. Then draw two squiggly circular lines around the letter to represent the electromagnetic field you need to generate around your body to match that potential in the quantum. Now assign some meaning to that letter so that you can get even clearer about your intention. Think of some specific refinements of what you want and list at least four of them. The only thing I don't want you to consider including is any mention of a time frame. For example, if your intention is a great job, your list might look like this. Making 50000 a year more than I'm making now. Managing my own team of awesome professionals. Traveling all over the world on a generous expense account. Having exceptional health benefits and great stock options. Making a difference in the world. Now on that same piece of paper, write down the emotions you will feel when that imagined potential happens. You might write, empowered, unlimited, grateful free, in awe, in love with life, joyful, worthy. Whatever it is for you, write it down. And if you think you won't know how it's going to feel because you haven't experienced it yet, then try gratitude. That works really well. Gratitude is a powerful emotion to use for manifesting because normally we feel gratitude after we receive something. So the emotional signature of gratitude means it has already happened. When you are thankful or you feel appreciation, you are in the ultimate state to receive. 
when you embrace gratitude, your body, as the unconscious mind, will begin to believe it is in that future reality in the present moment. These various emotions you just listed are the energy that is going to carry your intent. This is not an intellectual process. It is a visceral one. You have to really feel those emotions. You have to teach your body emotionally what that future is going to feel like before it happens. And you have to do that in the present moment. Now you're ready for the meditation. You can purchase the Tuning into New Potential CD or MP3 download from drjoedispenza.com and follow along as I guide you. Or you can choose to do the meditation on your own. Tuning into New Potentials Meditation Start by resting your attention in different parts of your body as well as the space around those parts of your body. You will learn more about doing this and why it's important in the next chapter. But for now, it's enough to know that focusing on the space around your body helps change your brainwaves, moving you from an incoherent beta brainwave pattern to a coherent alpha and theta brainwave pattern. Become aware of the infinite, vast space way out behind your eyes in this eternal black space. The space in the center of your head. The space between the back of your throat and the back of your head. And then beyond your head in space. Then move to becoming aware of the space in the center of your throat. The space beyond your throat and around your neck. The space in the center of your chest. The space around your body. The space behind your navel. And finally, the space around your hips in this endless black void. With each of these, take your time and feel it. Become aware of it and stay present with it. Become aware of the vastness of space that the room you're in occupies in space, and then extend your awareness to the vastness of space beyond the room in space, and finally, to the vastness of space that all of space occupies in space. Now it's time to take your attention off your body, the environment and time, and to become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time, to become pure consciousness, to unfold as an awareness into this infinite black space, an endless field where all possibilities exist. If you get distracted, simply return to the present moment, as we discussed in the previous chapter. Keep unfolding into this immaterial space by continuously reinvesting your attention into it. Think about the potential that already exists in the quantum field that you want to tune into by remembering your letter. Sense the energy of that future potential within you and all around you, and tune in to your future. When you do this, you will be moving into a new state of being, broadcasting a whole new electromagnetic signature into the field. When there's a vibrational match between your energy and that potential, the new event is going to find you. You don't have to make anything happen. I want to be clear here. It might take more than a few meditations for your future opportunity to unfold. It could happen in a week, a month, or even longer. The key is to keep doing it until it occurs. Once you're in a new state of being, broadcasting a new electromagnetic signature, now remember your future before it happens and begin to mentally rehearse what that future will be like by living in that future. Make it as real as possible, calling up those elevated emotions you listed so you can teach your body emotionally what that future feels like. Surrender your creation to a greater mind, planting a seed in the infinite field of possibilities, and just let it go. Finally, bless your body with a new mind. Bless your life. Bless your challenges. Bless your soul. Bless your past. And bless your future. Bless the divine in you and open your heart and give thanks for a new life before it's made manifest. Slowly bring your awareness back to the room and when you're ready, open your eyes. Get up from your meditation as though your future has already happened and let the synchronicities and new possibilities find you.